going to continue the thought and the ideas that we've been introducing about the power of ideas, the role of the managers, and then some tips. So here is the segment where we're going to dive into all that, all right? So what we need to look at is first and foremost, the, uh, the power of ideas as explained by one of my favorite guys, Steve Jobs, okay? Um, he said it this way, if you want to hire great people and have them stay working for you, you have to let them make a lot of decisions. And you have to be run by ideas, not hierarchy. The best ideas have to win. Otherwise, good people don't stay. That's a very powerful statement. Every word in that is incredibly powerful. If you want to hire great people, and notice he says, and you want them to stay. So it's true. I have found it to be very true in my 20 plus years of coaching businesses and coaching teams. The number one reason why people leave is definitely their immediate supervisor. Um, they usually say, oh, it's the company, the executive team. But when you get them in the loan in an exit interview and you get them honest uh, and they feel like there's no repercussion, they then tell you their relationship with their immediate supervisor or their coaches or their supervisors, their managers above, and how difficult it was to be heard. And so um, people that value themselves and value what they can bring to the table, and especially the young people today, millennials and anywhere below the age of 35, 30, okay? They do not put up with this. And in a lot of ways, I'm glad they don't. Um, we fault them for jumping around too much, but they don't put up with this. And to a large degree, it's their critique of us older folks that we've been taught, oh, just stick it out. And there is a value for sticking it out. Okay, we got to have patience. The truth is somewhere in the middle. But we tend to treat folks that their ideas just don't have value. And Steve Jobs is right on the money way. He says, people will leave you. And so if you have your current team and you, are, and you don't feel that ideas really are rising and being fostered and generated, I hate to say this, you, you good people have probably already left you or the people are now basically much just hunkered in and not giving you their all, okay? Uh, very powerful statement. All right, Steve Sonic. He says, the responsibility of leadership is not to come up with all the ideas, but to create an environment in which great ideas can thrive. So us as leaders, us as managers, is not to come up with the ideas, and that's what really works against us, because what got us here was the fact that we probably had some good ideas, and we knew how to implement them. And the people around us now aren't moving fast enough. They don't listen to me. I don't know how to get my ideas to them, so I'm just going to push, and I'm not going to create an environment, because not, not that I don't want to create that environment, it's just they don't know how to move fast enough for me. So now that you're a leader, now that you're a team leader, now that you're a supervisor, you forget that somebody listened to you at one point and they created an environment to where you could speak into, whereby you became one level of more, more success. So we don't, we forget because we never did that. We all, we were only the ones that were brought into that environment, but it was the people above us who gave us that environment and, and they never taught us how to create this environment. So one of the first things I do whenever I walk into businesses and I, and I work with executives, I work with leaders, and I try to assess what's going on and I try to get them to the next level, I just simply ask some basic questions. Tell me about your meetings. Tell me about are they safe places where great ideas can, have, can be brought, where good debates can be had, where there's, a, there's an environment of, of interaction and everyone feels like, I, don't, I know I don't get everything I want, and I know that I oftentimes lose the vote, and I, it's a lot of my ideas get shot down, but I know I can be heard. And guys, look, you say, yeah, Maurice, that's a, that's a pie-in-the-sky dream. I said, it is not. I just came back from visiting a client, okay, some friends in Atlanta. And um, my report back to them, after having sat with the, 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 them from meetings to meetings throughout on a single day, I sat in a two-hour meeting where it was middle managers, 
The owners were not in the room, and I couldn't tell the difference. There was not one single person in that room for a whole two hours that looked at their watch and trying to get out of there. They knew that's where they were doing business. They knew that's where they were running the show. And guys, honestly, I couldn't tell that there was no executive in the room because the way that they ran that two-hour meeting was powerful. And I have sat in hundreds of meetings over my past 20 years, hundreds and hundreds, and I will tell you that meeting is one of the top three, top five meetings of managers that I have sat in my entire career. Some of the best meetings were back in 1992 in the first few companies that I worked for, then in 2003, 2004, and some of the other teams that I, that I helped build and that I worked at. And it's some spotted, some spotted other companies that I've worked with where it's like they are doing it right. And, it, and that's what gives me so much encouragement because I see the engagement. And then here I am, 2020, I went into the visit of this team and I was like, yes, it can happen. It's real. And it's, it's a pleasure to see that. It's a pleasure to work in that. Okay. But so the role and the responsibility is for the managers to create that environment, to create those conversations. It says, all right, guys, 10 o'clock. It's time to meet again. And for everybody to really look forward to that, I saw that last week. Okay? And there was one, two, three, four, five. There was eight middle managers, and most of them had only been at the company for a year, year and a half. And as I talked with them individually, they pretty much told me, yeah, our manager, let's, go, let's, uh, uh, let's call her name Lisa, okay? Uh, they said, yeah, she's the one that has taught us how to do this. And she created an environment. She created a platform. She created an agenda. She created a structure. And everyone knew how to come in and present, debate, discuss. They stayed on agenda. They stayed on point. It was a real pleasure. Okay? So when, when Senate talks about an environment, it has to start with meetings. And you say, yeah, but does it always have to be meetings, sit-down meetings? No, no. No, throughout the whole day with them, visiting with them, it was the same thing when it was one-on-one -on -one conversations. There was this environment of knowing how to listen to each other. And one of the rules they play by is be careful that you don't let the other person finish their thought. And they watch out for that. Don't interrupt each other and don't change topics on someone. And you know when you're changing topics, you can't change topics. You have to finish the thought of what's being brought out. Like, wow, those are great rules. And so Lisa is facilitating that. And Lisa is making sure that everyone knows how to do that. And she goes and meets in their meetings with the other people within their departments and makes sure that that environment is being protected. As a leader, you have to get good at this. And that's what Team World World's about. That's what I'm about. I that's what my whole team is about is to help you be that listening manager because that's the only thing that Steve Jobs said. It's not your role. It's not your hierarchy. Hey, I'm the boss. It's their ideas. It's their feedback. It's their input. They know what's going on. They have a hard time telling you. Okay. And so uh, that is the role of, the, uh, of, of a manager.